Alright, hello citizens of the Nigerverse, it is Niger here once again, and, and this is going to be another wrestling review. So, because it is the month of November, it is Survivor Series season, so we're going to be looking at some um, uh, old school-ish uh, Survivor Series matches. Uh, what, I guess, what, what does constitute old school? To me, old school is like, I, I don't know, it's like maybe, maybe like 20 plus years for some people consider like some people consider like five years old school well some people consider the year before old school which is like no nah, it's still too recent so what so i guess what do you consider old school i guess is the uh question let me know but essentially we're diving back into the vault now last year on the channel around this time we reviewed who champion versus champion as aj styles was uh was the wwe champion at the time uh battled brock lesnar the universal champion at the time and so i'm um, and and uh it was gonna be a age it was gonna be gender versus brock and they kind of hyped that up which could you imagine but uh aj styles won on uh the wwe championship if uh if, uh from jinder mahal not too long before survivor series so it was brock lesnar versus aj styles was uh was uh in, instead at Survivor Series, and that turned out to be a really fantastic match. So, going into 2018 Survivor Series, it seemed as though WWE was going to do AJ versus Brock 2, who uh, thankfully, he, uh, he not electric boogaloo, because this one would actually he have been solid, but at the 11th hour on the SmackDown right before uh, Survivor Series, uh, he's uh, Daniel Bryan, in, uh, in, uh, who had just came back from uh retirement his initial retirement not too long ago oh uh oh i uh, had defeated aj styles to become the new wwe champion and had turned heel this was the birth of the new daniel bryan and not quite the eco warrior just yet that actually wouldn't come for another uh, couple weeks or so i believe but, but instead it's going to be daniel bryan versus brock lesnar so what happened when they he collided at Survivor Series? Would it be able to replicate the magic of the previous year? Let's find out. So, of course, as always, he's, and it's probably worth mentioning how Brock got here. No, this isn't the same title reign that Brock uh, took in to Survivor Series this year. Here, uh, Brock had actually lost the Universal Championship to Roman Reigns and, uh, and at SummerSlam. And, and Roman was champion up until his leukemia diagnosis, so he... Uh, was forced to vacate the uh, Universal Championship. If, and Brock, to the surprise, annoyance, and even anger of several, well, became Universal Champion yet again at, I believe, I believe Crown Jewel, yes. Oh, oh, uh, oh, uh, he, he, uh, Brock pretty much defeated Braun Strowman, cooled off the last... Uh, of the white hot Strowman, and uh, who at this point was sadly kind of lukewarm, but uh, had defeated Braun Strowman after interference from Baron Corbin. Why? I, uh, so Brock was Universal Champion yet again, so we get Champion versus Champion here. But as always, I'm not a professional, not a professional uh, wrestling reviewer, analyst, or anything like that. Just a man who enjoys a good time, and I had a really good time with this match. Is it as good as AJ versus Brock? I wouldn't say so, oh, but it is still a very, very good match, and a match I definitely recommend. So, and but what went down? Hound, uh, hound. Let's uh, let's get into it and figure out. Oh, and it was definitely better than the five on five that year. Or, uh, but if you've seen these reviews of mine before, you kind of already know how this works. If you haven't, I'm gonna be talking about what I liked and disliked about this match. Uh, so starting with what I liked, I think uh, Daniel Bryan and, and Brock Lesnar. Is a match that not a lot of people would consider a dream match, not out of spite or dislike for either guy, hey, but it's seemingly because it's a match, match I feel like people hadn't really thought about, at least not at that time. I wasn't seeing a lot of people talking about how uh, how uh, Brock and Daniel Bryan is a dream match at the time, but it's a match that even though it's not necessarily a dream match to a lot of people, it's a match that still does generate some excitement and for all intents and purposes i would say they delivered uh brock brought his uh brought his his power or her and uh mma background and everything daniel bryan able to bring his technical prowess and his striking ability he making for 
and, and of course his submission ability, making for kind of the best of both worlds. And really, this match feels like three different matches. Is you have the opening part where Daniel Bryan's kind of taunting Brock and kind of kicks him a couple times, and then you have the next next uh, part. Or where Brock just decimates Daniel Bryan for a little bit, and then Daniel Bryan with a low blow to Brock, and then from there it really stands a fighting chance against Brock, and really starts to really starts to go to work on him, him, uh, him. Uh, so kind of a tale of three matches, but as but still very entertaining, and and it's one of those things where hey, you kind of you know, they kind of they kind of go to your expectations a little bit and then subvert them because as while there are, I'm sure people who were excited for this match I definitely was one of them um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, at the time at least he's uh, he's uh, because uh, it's obviously hindsight hadn't kicked in yet but uh, while there were some who were excited there were others I'm sure who were concerned because oh man is Brock gonna squash Daniel Bryan like Daniel Bryan's much much smaller than Brock are they just gonna have him squash Daniel Bryan squash the WWE Champion it sounds ludicrous but is but considering how they would mess up Brock versus Ricochet hey uh hey about two years later or yeah that's probably a very valid concern I'm sure for a lot of people thankfully though oh, didn't really happen and uh and um uh, uh, didn't really happen here or we kind of got that at first which is why I said it kind of played in some people's expectation of oh no they're just gonna squash Daniel Bryan and then they subverted them by having Daniel Bryan actually fight back and look competent and and, and dare I say even strong against Brock Lesnar <laughs> To the point where Dan Bryan targeting Brock's knee, he uh, even giving him some ring post it his uh his his before Brock kind of ekes out the F5 to get the win. So Brock Brock doesn't look too bad in defeat. He uh, Daniel Bryan uh, is able to hang with Brock Lesnar successfully. So oh you kind of they, they kind of have their cake and they eat it too. They get to make Brock look like this dominant in force and everything, but then. And you also get to see how Daniel Bryan interacts with Brock and get to show his wrestling ability against the Beast Incarnate. It's so, oh, uh, kind of giving us the best of both worlds in that regard. Right now, oh, would I have been cool with Brock versus AJ Part Two? Who I'm sure, I'm sure I and a lot of people who definitely would have, considering how good their match was the previous year, would it have lived up to the previous year if they did it again for 2018. In uh, in uh, th there's a possibility. He there's a possibility it might not. Uh, sadly, sequels aren't always as good as the original. In fact, I'd argue sequel, and I'm sure a lot of people would argue sequels oftentimes aren't as good as the original. But I think it still would have been a good match. But but uh, but uh, them going for Daniel Bryan versus Brock Lesnar, or being able to showcase that, at I think, excuse me, he ended up being. It ended up being the better route, and the way they went about it later, uh, later on, on it, if it was just Brock squashing Daniel Bryan, it probably wouldn't have been as good. But, but uh, with Daniel Bryan being able to fight back, being able to show he can hang uh, with the beast and everything, and, and, and as well as getting his taunting in at the beginning, and, and kind of like and kind of mocking Brock a little bit, it's I think, I think and he was able to accomplish that goal. Oh, in terms of why I didn't quite like, like, uh, hey, admittedly, he, the part where Brock just dominates over Daniel Bryan, I and suplex after suplex, F5 after F5, even though, oh, uh, oh, uh, him, and going for the F5 and then saying goodnight, everybody, <laughs> yes, he was about to hit it, admittedly was pretty hilarious, but, uh, that part, I think, dragged on for a while, like, 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 watching this match back, I watched it live when it happened, but watching it back here for the first review, I was like, man, I forgot how long it took before we got uh, Daniel Bryan fighting back. And, it, like, and when you have it kind of drawn out too long like that, and you kind of run the risk of a lot of people leaving because it's like, oh, man, Brock's just going to squash Daniel Bryan. I am the whole time. I'm, 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 why, why, why am I watching this? Forget this. It's, uh, it's, thankfully, they won them back, but uh, for some, I imagine it probably was too late. They probably clicked off and probably missed the rest of a really good match, unfortunately. But, uh, but Hutz, uh, Hutz, I get you want to have Rock dominate, but that part, I think, dragged on a little too long. Um, and, and this is why it does feel like it's three matches, but that also kind of comes to a detriment because... <laughs> 
but then you have have uh, this part art of it which kind of messes up kind of the flow of the match like like the match is kind of slow it slows to a grinding screeching halt as Brock is dominant over Daniel Bryan and then it picks back up again once Daniel Bryan starts getting his offense in but and but uh but you kind of you kind of mess up the flow of the match a little bit they they do bring it back they're able to bring it back I, uh, I, if I can kind of compare it to something it's like the slow ascent to the top of the roller coaster or before the roller coaster goes down and gets all exciting I mean I wouldn't know because i I never rode a roller coaster, nor do I plan on it. But, um, but uh, sa but sadly, or actually, I have rode a couple roller coasters, but not a whole lot, especially not like the loop de loop ones. But I digress. Uh, so, oh, I get that might be what they were going for, but I think it almost got a little bit lost in translation. But that aside, definitely do recommend uh, watching this match if you haven't already. He, uh, like I said, between this and the AJ Styles match. Uh, first Brock Lesnar match, I definitely gotta go with the AJ one, only because it feels a lot more, a lot more well paced, and haste and, <clears throat> hey, haste and uh, doesn't feel very bottom heavy. He, uh, in a way, like AJ gets his offense in on Brock uh, pretty much throughout, but, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, but otherwise, it, it's still a really good match, and a match that I definitely recommend, but. In the meantime, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you did, please do me a favor. Like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, and turn on post notifications so you know every time I upload videos, you can see as soon as it drops. And let me know in the comments below your thoughts on uh, the match, my review of the match. Did you like to like this match? Do you like to like my review of this match? Let me know. Uh, Survivor Series reviews coming for the rest of the month of November. We have a few more that we're going to get to, and I think you guys are really going to enjoy them. But in the meantime, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for watching. Excuse me. And I will see you guys later. Peace.